So, I'm going to be reading my testimony with scriptures, but I'm also going to be talking a little bit about um, the armor of God. So, our God loves us enough to equip us daily with the full armor of God. Now we say, let's put on the breastplate of righteousness and so on. But what does that really mean? How do we use it to equip ourselves to guide and inspire others on a daily basis? The armor of God represents the defense we must take in our spiritual lives. The Bible tells us that we are fighting a war against Satan who seeks to destroy us. Therefore, we must take action and put on God's armors. As Christians, it is important for us to understand the severity of this battle. I really struggled in the beginning of my walk with God. I had no idea where I was going, no inspiration and no protection that I knew of. God always had my back even when I couldn't see it. One of the two scriptures that really helped me get through that part of my life was Philippians 4.13, where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I spoke this over myself daily, as well as 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. <coughs> no matter where I was headed, I knew God was lighting my path, even when I felt it was too dark for me to see. In the beginning, I lashed out at people who tried to help me due to the abuse I had gone through as a child. I really struggled with people who were nice to me. I know, sounds crazy. <coughs> but people in my past who were nice to me had always ended up abandoning or beating me and so I was very untrusting of others. <coughs> I really didn't trust anyone or love anyone, not even myself. And eventually when I had my daughter, I loved her and with everything I had. When I had her, my whole world changed. Everything became about her, protecting her and inspiring her to be the best version of her that she could be. But in doing that, I put myself, and worst of all, God, on the back burner. And we all know how God doesn't like to share. <laughs> so I feel like God removed me from that situation and away from my child. I was so angry at God at the time, but as I matured and grew in Christ, I understood why God did what he did in that situation. I was cutting at the time, and not mentally and emotionally fit to be a mom in that moment. And that was a really tough lesson for me to learn. But looking back, if I had stayed, it would have very, it would have ended very badly for me and her. I came to church for the first time with Mama Linda. She told me she loved me and hugged me for a couple minutes. And I didn't come back for three months. It terrified me that somebody said they could love me and actually mean it. I was so scared that people here were gonna be the same way as people in my past. As I eventually grew more trusting and less weary, I began working on my recovery. I had started cutting when I was 13. I started to get clean for my daughter and to be able to get her back in my life and be a full-time mom. Well, we all know what we want and what God wants. We're not always on the same page. Even though we want it to be, be like, God, this is what I want. And he's like, yeah, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> So, God had other plans, and I relapsed a few times. And one night, I said, okay, God, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I can't live with the pain of not having my child and not being able to watch her grow up. And I didn't want to live that night. And in that moment, I reached out to Mama Linda, and she spoke Hebrews 11.1 1 over me, which is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That was the first night since the first few times that I had cut that I actually felt the razor pierce my skin. The nerves had been so damaged from years of cutting, the doctor said I would never regain this feeling. Well, God had healed me and I felt it. And that was the start of my new journey. After feeling that pain, I immediately stopped and knelt to the ground and gave my heart and life to Jesus in that moment. Fully. I prayed and said, this recovery is for me and me alone, because in the past I was in recovery for all the wrong reasons. And I will walk in your ways, and I will have you guide my path, even if I can't see where you're taking me. I didn't
didn't have anyone when I was cutting, when I was little, to help inspire to me better, for me to be better. And now because of Jesus, I have the opportunity daily to help encourage and inspire others to be the better version of themselves. I sponsor a young lady who is 13 and one who is nine, and they are both cutters. I just hit 10 years clean, and on that day, they both called me separately and told me I was their biggest inspiration to stop cutting. Because if me, who had been what I went through, could do it, they could do it too. One of them invited me to church to her church to watch her be baptized for the first time. I went and she spoke about why she was doing it before and she looked right at me and said because God knew I needed him before I did and he sent me one of his angels to help guide me and inspire me to want to get clean and walk with Jesus on the daily. Her words, not mine. <laughs> I cried. I had needed this so much as a child, and I get so inspired listening to the people I get to inspire. We all put on the armor of God daily, but we also need to learn how to choose to be an inspiration to the people around us daily. I know it can be hard, especially if you are somewhat introverted like me, but whether it's just a smile, a kind word, or an offer of prayer. Hebrews 10:24 to 25 and let us consider how we may spur on one another toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all more as you see the day approaching. Let's be the inspiration to others that we needed at the lowest points in our lives. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. What was 2nd Corinthians? What verse was it in 2nd Corinthians?